Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be grinding our mechanics from hopefully three to four so that we can work on some hub assemblies. Not exactly the most fun thing to do in the world, but it is what it is. So we're going to grab all of our vehicle working tools. We dropped them all in this pile. Let's just sort them. It's easier to sort. We shouldn't leave everything in this pile. We should sort things out as we get them anyway. Uh, why don't we have something to eat? We haven't eaten really uh, since this morning. What time is it? Yeah, we haven't eaten since maybe five this morning. So we'll go ahead and have something to eat. Best recommendation I can make for you uh, regarding eating. I see people complain about it all the time about not understanding the food system. Just eat like you would normally eat. Why, why can't we? Oh, did our hot dogs go bad? Uh, where did my hot dogs go? We had a whole mess of hot dogs, I thought. Okay, well, we don't have hot dogs anymore. That's fine. Uh, so we're not really going to be able to do much with this bread. If we go to our search engine, our search, uh, our crafting menu, our search engine, I'm real dumb. We search for bread. We can see everything that would require bread uh, as a component. Uh, uh, what meat would we be using? We do have bologna. We would, don't really want to open cans of meat necessarily. We have sausage there. What, what about a sloppy joe? Bread. It would use some tomatoes or red sauce. We would use the red sauce. Actually, it's probably a can of red sauce. And we wouldn't necessarily want to open a whole can because it would go bad. Yeah, because it would go bad before we would use all of it. So I don't know that that's something we want to do. Um, bread. BLT. We do have bacon, lettuce, and canned tomatoes. We'd use, we don't have enough bread to make two, so the veg, the uh, tomatoes would go bad. Go ahead and just give me a meat sandwich. We'll make one, and we'll use the sausage, I think, because the bologna is not going to give very many calories. Go ahead and do that. Yeah, the best advice I can give is just eat like you would eat in real life. Eat like two meals a day of average amounts of calories or higher amounts of calories. Then if you're hungry other times and you're you're maybe you're underweight or something, uh, if you're underweight, eat more calories. If you're overweight, eat less calories. So eat like one or two decent sized meals a day. And then if you're still hungry and you're overweight, just snack is the recommendation I would give just like you would in real life. There are so many people in Cataclysm that I talk to who are like, I don't get it, my guy. I just want to eat exactly the right number of calories. It's like, I don't want you, don't min-max. Like, I don't understand that logic. You have There's so much food in the game. Why do you feel like you need to eat just enough calories to survive? Like, you've seen it. We've been doing, we've been playing for about uh, 11 days, 10 days. We've had tons of food go rotten because we couldn't even consume it fast enough. So it's like, why do you try to min-max your food when its food is so readily available? I just don't understand that mindset. And I don't understand min-maxing in a game like this. There's no reason to min-max because you can get everything. It's totally doable to get everything you would ever need. So we got the hacksaw, the, uh, we're gonna need the wrench again. Grab the wrench. What would we need for the cargo carrier? We'll need the welder. So we'll grab the welder and the goggles are on this pile. Uh, and that should be it for vehicle work. So we'll head out. We saw that cargo carriers, external cargo carriers, require a mechanics of three. So if we just install and uninstall those from a vehicle, we should be able to raise our mechanic skill. So let's grab a cargo space here, preferably a decent quality one. Go ahead and grab this. This will take a little bit. Now we have a cargo carrier, which we can use to install an external cargo carrier. The limiting factor here is our welder. We have 75 per charge, so we can only install five of these before we would uh, run out of battery and we would need to recharge our battery. So let's check our mechanic skill is 17%. Did, did we just get mechanics for uninstalling that? 17%. So we'll uninstall another one and check again. Uh, mechanics 17 percent so we did not get mechanic skill for removing that so okay let's install the external carrier we're still at 17 percent this will take an hour which is a long time to be doing this 20 we got four percent for that okay that's going to take entirely too long so we're going to try not to do that let's come down here and see if we can uh 
uh, do this by craft raising. If not, we, we might just be stuck here until we can source enough materials. Turn off the fire, because uh, we're very warm. We're still very warm. It's possible that there's, yeah, hot air here. Um, if we look inside, you'll see there are varying shades of hot air um, that will make the interior of the building warmer than it would be if we were outside. So if we come over here, we're not as warm. We should still be within range of everything, I think. Probably not, actually. But we'll go to P Mechanics. Yeah, we don't have all the recipes. So head down here. We're just going to have to work in the heat a little bit. Uh, I don't want to take my clothes off because then when I leave, well, we're going to be here for a while. A lot of times when I take off my gear to cool off, I end up overheating or uh, leaving the base without my materials and then getting attacked and, and taking extra damage. We're going to go P mechanics. We did source enough materials to make things uh, to raise our mechanics. We would like to start with something that doesn't require a lot of materials. We don't have pipes for this. We do have a lot of copper wire. Vehicle controls, I didn't even look at these before. It requires a welder though. That would be uh, limiting because we'd have to run out to recharge it all the time. We can get wire really easily. We can get pipes pretty easily. Why don't we do that? I think it takes 30 minutes. How long for the water purifier? 25 minutes, but it uses a lot of heating elements. We can only make three of them. Let's make one. What, what were we at? 21%? Where, where's there a grabber zombie? Ignore. We'll see what happens here. We're fine. Uh, 21% to 38%. We can make those to level up. Uh, you'll see we memorized the recipe. So previously we were using a book to craft this. But now we will have access to that recipe anywhere we go. Uh, I don't know what the, how the water purifier works. Water purifier. Battery powered device designed to purify drinking water using this item on a container full of water will purify the contents. That's pretty cool. Uh, I've never used that item in game because it's very easy to boil water. Uh, we can't throw this in the fire. Can I disassemble this for the materials back? Um, yeah, it looks like we would get some stuff disassemble. Let's see what we get back. I mean, it looks like we got all the materials we would need, so we should be able to just recraft this uh, from those materials and then deconstruct, and then recraft, and deconstruct. So the materials are not as limiting of a factor as I thought. People tell me to do this all the time. I usually don't because it's a little tedious and not very fun to, to recycle the same materials over and over. Uh, what is our mechanic skill? 55%. We're tired. We're hungry. We're thirsty. Let's eat, drink, and do this maybe one more time before we would go to bed. Again, we ate a decent number of calories today, so I'm just going to snack on some lettuce because I'm a bunny rabbit. And we'll drink some cranberry juice because we got this. And it's going to go bad uh, over time, so we might as well drink it. Plus, it provides some calories. So we'll just drink that, uh, and then we'll have a swig of water. Clean water. Do we not have a big jug of clean water? We don't. We'll have to deal with that at some point, but... Not a big deal at the moment. Recraft. Uh, by the way, you can use the minus key to automatically recraft the last thing that you crafted. So if I hit minus, you'll see we immediately begin on the water purifier. It will do it in the number of the, in the quantity of the item you previously crafted. So if you made say eight, you weren't sure how much uh, free space you had to craft your water, so you only made seven of them. Uh, and you find out you have an empty jug, you can quickly just hit the minus key, make the other seven, and dump it in the same jug pretty easily. Uh, this actually isn't taking super long, so we'll make another one. And we'll just keep doing this. And this will level our mechanics. This is a lot easier than I thought it would be. Um, I wasn't thinking about deconstructing items, because I usually don't do that. Because, again, I find it a little tedious. And it also seems like a silly way to grind your skills. Um, because... Crafting the same thing over and over, you would think wouldn't be that uh, beneficial to actually getting better at mechanics because it's the same thing over and over. We're going to ignore the grabber zombie. If uh, When we head back out, we'll look to kill it, but uh, how are we doing? Mechanics, 99%. Uh, so what could we do to quickly and easily? I mean, I guess we just make another one. Uh, we could stop in the middle of crafting it, but we might as well keep it in case it's useful at some point in the future. So we'll go ahead and drop the... Water purifier. We now have the skill required to install the hub. Where is the grabber zombie? 
We don't know. Probably it wandered up. Oh, I just saw there you are. Probably chasing the raccoon. Grab your zombie to the north. We'll head up there and kill it. Get your spear out, dummy. We'll go kill that. Then we'll come back, have a nap, and we'll go out. Actually, we don't really want to go right to bed because if we go to bed, um, we're going to wake up at nighttime and we're not going to be able to work on the vehicle. Smash, ignore. Grabber zombie is not really an upgraded zombie, but it's not like a standard zombie either. We talked about them before. They will grab you uh, from a couple tiles away and they will hold you in that grab, which allows other zombies the opportunity to bite you. So it's generally pretty good to... Uh, take care of them when they're not in a big group let's go back to raising our first aid read we also got some new books so let's read these to get access to the recipes you'll see the sushi book takes us to cooking four humane fashion takes us to cooking uh to tailoring five and they both contain recipes so here is faux fur items because it's humane fashion so it's not actually fur uh, and then we have the uh, cookbook, which gives us, because it's a sushi-specific book, gives us a lot of um, Japanese food here. Um, fried tofu. I still have never had, like, just raw, like, tofu on its own. I've always had it in a dish. And then recently I was uh, going to make uh, dango for my niece, and that would require me to buy some tofu, but I never got around to it because... Uh, coronavirus happened and now I don't like going out to the grocery store because uh, when I see a bunch of empty shelves and people in masks it freaks me out and uh, I don't have the best mental health so I try to avoid anything that would be problematic for my mental health. Let's just eat some more lettuce to get our hunger to go away. We're still overweight. Uh, yeah, let's read to raise our first aid. We're right around 73 focus. Uh, go ahead and have a swig of beer. This will put us in a decent mood. Pale Ale sounds fine. And we'll grab our MP3 player. And basically I think we will read until the sun goes down. Then we'll go to sleep. That way we can pretty much guarantee that we'll wake up at night. So we're looking for Big Book of First Aid. We'll find that in our list. Pick that up. And we'll activate our music. And our mood should be okay. Fatigue level minus 30. Yeah, so that's not great. Uh, and we can't do anything about that. We could drink uh, coffee to, to lower our tiredness. Uh, I think also maybe some teas work. If we got stimulants, it might uh, negate the sleepiness. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to read. Hopefully get to skill level 2 before the sun goes down. That way we would heal a little bit more overnight. Although we're not in such a position where we desperately need to heal. So I'm not really concerned about that. The sun is going down slowly. Too dark to read. Go ahead and turn off the MP3 player. We didn't even get close to level 2, which is fine. It's not that big of a deal. Drop the MP3 player. We will apply some more makeshift bandages uh, to our wounds here. Uh, makeshift bandage to the really bad arm. In fact, we'll do another one as well. Yeah, my throat's bothering me. It's weird. I haven't really been recording. That's the other benefit of me not recording is like my throat hasn't been bothering me as much. It's just when I talk, you know, usually I record like six to eight episodes a day, depending on the day. Uh, and by the end of it, my voice is just shot. And I thought if I only record three or four here and there, it wouldn't bother me as much. But I'm just not used to talking for so long. Even after a year of doing it, it's so... Exhausting to talk non-stop for 30 minutes at a time or longer like my Isaac episodes are so much longer We want our headgear so we don't get woken up Shouldn't have left that door open the raccoon could escape headgear We uh, have been keeping a raccoon captive in our basement uh, To be harvested at our leisure for food uh, Again, there's no um, hunger or anything for animals So he's not gonna starve to death or anything if we leave him down here Go ahead and put on the headgear. And we're going to keep an eye out for when those chicks hatch as well. We might want to capture some chickens and, and save them. Although chickens don't have very much meat on them. They're mostly only usable for uh, eggs, which is not, they're not very many calories. So I really don't see the benefit of keeping chickens in Cataclysm. There was a change recently, maybe two months ago, that allows you to capture and uh, breed rabbits, essentially, uh, which uh, appeals to me much more. I actually really like Stuff like that. I, I really hate that. 
I love games like uh, Harvest Moon and Stardew Valley, and those things really appeal to me. I've always loved those kind of games. I grew up playing a lot of Harvest Moon, but they never let you harvest animals for meat, and that always really bothered me. And I get it. It's cutesy, and you want it to appeal to kids, but like, you know, in I think in Stardew Valley, if you raise the rabbits, they give you fur. And it's like, yeah, some rabbits are raised for their fur, but also you eat them. Like rabbits, 90% of people who raise rabbits are for food. So it always really bothered me that you couldn't call animals, which I know is probably like a really cruel sounding thing to say, but like, that's how the world really works, ladies and gentlemen. Where do you think your meat comes from? Like I know, especially in America, we have a very disconnected, um, we're very disconnected from the concept of actually meat being harvested from an animal. I think most people actually think when they get a steak, they're like, oh, this is just a steak. They don't think about the process of, you know, an animal being raised specifically for the, the purpose of harvesting them for meat. I think that's um, something that if people actually had, like, you know, the old expression, how the sausage is made. I think if most people actually went and saw how this sausage goes from animal to sausage, they would probably be vegetarians. Um, that said, I love meat. Uh, and eat a lot of meat. We're back down to normal weight, so we can start eating regular food again uh, instead of small, small, um, smaller calorie counts. Problem is we don't have much to cook, and we're not very good at cooking. We're only cooking level two. We could just go into our menu. Uh, we would have to start a fire first when we do this. Uh, plank, sure. Drop a plank in the fire. Start a fire. And if we just go to the cooking menu, um, we'll go to the meat menu because we have a lot of canned meat. Man. Okay. I mean, if we could make something, no, we would have to use the cornbread. I mean, we can. We can use the cornbread. We'll just make one batch. It'll use up our cornbread and we'll make it out of sardines, I guess, or salmon. We don't want to like open a can of chicken which is a, a two charge item and we would only use one charge. So then we'd have an empty, we'd have a half open can of chicken. I mean, if we cook it, it's not a big deal. If we use it the rest of the day, it would not be a big deal for now. We'll just go ahead and use the canned chicken. It, it doesn't matter. We'll open a can of chicken, dispose, store an in inventory, eat our meat sandwiches, 400 calories each hefty amount uh, because of the chicken plus cornbread has more calories than standard bread. And then if we go P chicken, oh, uh, P can of chicken. No, uh, P, uh, first of all, C chicken, not, not P. That's why we have a lot of rotten eggs. Uh, you'll see it's colored brown to alert us to the fact that it will be rotten eggs. It's weird that we can make deluxe eggs all oh, because of powdered eggs. Yeah, okay, we don't want that. We want something that uses the canned chicken. Curry with meat. Curry is effing delicious. I, man, I have not had curry in a long time. Um, this would require a bean item. We really don't want to open a can of beans. We could use dried beans, dehydrated vegetables. Would require canned tomato. We don't want to do that. Um, really, that's all we can make with our chicken. Just eat the can of chicken. I don't want to deal with this can of chicken. It says medium can, but I thought the regular cans had two charges. doesn't matter. 400 calories. It's great. Huge amount of calories today. We've eaten already um, something like eight or 900 calories. We will drink more of the cranberry juice. We'll get a little more calories from our beverage uh, and then we'll drink some water. We really do need to refresh our water. Uh, we're good here, so let's head out and take care of our vehicle. Do we still have our vehicle tools? We do. See the welder used charges when we installed that cargo rack. Put on our motorcycle pants and helmet. I think when we fought the grappler zombie or whatever, the grabber zombie, we weren't wearing our armor, which is exactly what I was talking about <laughs> as a problem. And make sure you have the spear in your hands. Let's see if we can get this vehicle moving. Wouldn't that be nice? We're at 20 minutes. I'd love to polish this off by the end of this video because I'd like to stop for the day because my throat is bothering me and I'm trying to not do YouTube as much. So we now have the opportunity to install the hub assemblies and we want to make them steerable again. 
front wheels should be steerable. You'll see it will require 150 charges, so we actually don't have enough charges to do all four. We'll have to recharge our batteries, our battery, singular battery. Steerable, okay, that's it. We don't have enough charges for the other two. You'll see these now have hubs on them, which is great. We can go ahead and throw the tires on if we want. Actually, let's do that while this is charging. So in order to recharge a battery in a recharging station, you will have to install the charging station on a vehicle that has a battery in it that has charge. This has already been done for us, so we'll go ahead and dump. Uh, we will unload our makeshift welder so that we have the battery as a singular item, um, which is what we need to do. And we will drop that onto the recharging station so it now contains um, our battery. Also, recharging stations need to be installed on like a trunk or a box or something so that there is a space for them to be contained. You'll see here is a box installed uh, with the recharging station. So this battery is now in the charging station. And what we would do is either from driving the vehicle or from standing next to it, we would activate the vehicle menu. This is the uh, carrot symbol. If you're not in the vehicle, and I recommend not being in the vehicle unless you're driving as well, because there's no reason to turn it on and use up uh, fuel and whatnot if you don't have to. Uh, so we would hit the carrot symbol and we would come down here to turn on recharger. Now, the thing to be aware of is that this will eat up our battery. You'll see it's losing 10 watts, um, which is gonna drain this battery. Now, it's at 18%. We probably could fully recharge the battery without this dropping to zero, but because we don't wanna have to replace the battery, I'm just gonna run the engine a little bit. So we'll turn on the engine and then I will use the carrot symbol to let go of the controls that way we can step out of the vehicle even though it's turned on and as long as the engine is on it will charge the battery you'll see it went from minus 10 to plus 960 and we're just going to install one of the tires while it does this so install off-road wide wheel this will take nine minutes and we'll see how much the batteries and stuff have changed so in nine minutes we went up i don't remember what it was 17 percent up six percent and the battery went to full charge. It's very, very fast to recharge using a charging station. So we'll turn that off. How long does it take to install a wheel assembly? Uh, reload the welder. My bad. Reload the welder. You need a compatible magazine? Uh, did I not pick up the battery? I did not. Okay. Reload the welder. And how long does it take to install the hub? 45 minutes. Yeah, we'll let the engine run for 45 minutes. This should raise the battery by like 40%. Oh, literally to 100%. I can't do math. So now we will turn off the engine because we don't want to waste fuel. You'll see in that time we did burn a few percentages of our of our diesel. Not sure why there's a G after the word diesel here. Um, but we were at like 8.2, I think. So we did burn some diesel. And again, diesel is somewhat of a precious resource. We'll go ahead and install the other hub. I would highly recommend that if you're installing hubs that you make them next to each other. Don't put one up here and one back here. It just doesn't make sense. Um, think about how they go on a regular vehicle. Uh, and then we'll install the wheels as well, which will not require our welder. Did I install? I did install a wheel here. Go ahead and throw on the off-road wheel. Turn it, putting the wheels on is much faster, obviously, than welding on a new hub. So put on the wheels and now our vehicle should be perfectly drivable. Hop in here, start this baby up and look at that. We got the Humvee up and running, which is really great. Uh, so we're gonna take this back to our base where we will continue to work on it as necessary. Humvee is a good starting vehicle. Um, we didn't really talk about starting vehicles. Basically, when you build your own vehicle, you can do so from scratch, but it's a lot of work, and I find that I'm one of the few people who actually does that. How slow can we go? Four? I don't want to hit the other vehicle. Turn this bad boy around here. Park it right here. Um, some people start from scratch. I enjoy starting from scratch, but usually only when I'm making a motorcycle. I don't like to do a full vehicle from scratch. Um, because a motorcycle is like three tiles, it's not a big deal. If you're talking about building an entire vehicle from scratch, it's usually going to be like this big, uh, which is quite large. Usually three tiles wide in the middle, so five tiles total. And then usually mine are longer than this, probably about this long. Um, so you figure doing all those tiles one at a time, all the components that go into making it, it's really time consuming to do that. 
it can be fun for sure. And there are people on Discord who share these pictures of enormous, crazy vehicles that are amphibious and have lots of turrets and all this stuff. That doesn't really appeal to me, so I don't usually do that. Um, but starter vehicles are great. You're usually looking for something that's five tiles wide because that's the pretty standard size. So the Humvee is good for that. Additionally, the Humvee has armor on it. If we look up here, it will say military composite armor um, when I mouse over these tiles. Um, and that's usually pretty good. Uh, military composite is one of the more available armors. So even if you aren't going to be building from scratch, if you find a Humvee, you can take the armor off of it, put it on your other vehicle. Um, so Humvees are good for that. Um, mostly I'm looking for the five tiles wide and three tile interior. We'll take the seats out because we don't need a lot of seats. Uh, we'll put a bed in it. We'll change the boards. Mostly what I'm looking for is one, the reinforced windshield is nice, but not necessary. It comes with a recharger, which is nice, but not necessary. If we didn't have a recharger, I think you need electronics like six in order to do that yourself. So that's uh, something we'd have to really grind to get. Um, and, and I think it also requires a pretty high mechanic skill, which we don't currently have the ability to get to. So like, it's usually good to find something that has a recharger in it. That's pretty great. Um, I think limousines also have rechargers a lot of times. Um, really the main thing people look for are the RVs because the RVs come with a bed. They already have blacked out rears so you can close everything up and sleep in it. They usually have mini fridges in them, which is a good thing to have in a vehicle. But really all I'm looking for is something with five tiles wide. Usually I prefer longer vehicles. I like starting with a flatbed truck because it starts with lots of cargo spaces, which you're going to be putting in your vehicle because they're the biggest. Like trunks are not very big. You'll see it can only hold 162 liters. Um, whereas the cargo spaces can hold 250. And as far as I know, in vanilla are the biggest cargo container you can have in a vehicle. So I like the flatbed because it comes with all those. It's pretty long and wide. So all I have to do is cut the back end off of it and start putting on boards and installing a bed and stuff. So this will be the foundation of our vehicle as we move forward. We definitely will be expanding the length of this at some point, although that's quite a lot of work. And usually I wait until I have several medium batteries. That way I don't have to stop and recharge, stop and recharge. I can just have them cycling as I'm doing it. Um, we're going to want to put solar panels on it. That way we can gain free energy charge during the daytime for our batteries instead of uh, having to run the vehicle to charge our batteries. We're going to want to put storage batteries in it, which are big batteries that are much larger than the uh, car battery. This can only hold 2,500 charge. I believe the, the average... Um, Oh, how much is a storage battery? It's like a factor of 10. I think it's like 25,000 or some huge number like that. Uh, much higher than the battery. So we want bigger battery stores. We're going to be putting a lot of other utility stuff in here. Eventually an autoclave. We're going to put our bed in here. Probably a mini fridge or mini freezer. We're going to be putting lots of cargo spaces in it. Vehicle work is something that will take a lot of your time, but is also a lot of fun. Uh, it's tedious. Don't get me wrong. It's very tedious to do part by part by part. But at the end, it's very, very satisfying to look at a vehicle and say, I built this, not from scratch necessarily, but I built this out to be what I wanted it to be. So we'll definitely be doing vehicle work in the future. For now, we've secured a vehicle which will allow us to exit this area and start exploring um, because this town is just not super appealing. We did push pretty far up here. We might go try to hit this other gun shop before we really leave the town. But those are all things for tomorrow or another day of recording. So uh, odds are good I won't remember what I was going to do and I will just decide then what is best for me, which is something that you should do in basically every episode anyway. Not episode, but every time you sit down to play, you should take a look. Just like I did today when we started, I looked at my health, I looked at my, my, my status, I thought about what would be the most prudent thing to do today, what I was most interested in doing today, and then I assessed and decided what to do. So, I think we're going to kill this zombie that I see somewhere, and then we're going to call the episode. Yeah, you've spotted me and everything. Come on over. We're still getting zombies trickling from the world around us, um, and they hear us, or they hear us driving, or they hear the gunshots in the prison, and they start migrating. So, yeah. And we do know that there is a vehicle up by the baseball diamond that has diesel in it, and if I remember right, it had quite a lot of diesel in it. So if we really find ourselves hurting for gasoline or whatever fuel, we can head back over there. So for now, I think that's going to do it. I'm pretty happy we got the Humvee. Uh, we now have the ability to recharge our batteries. 
which is nice. We will drop the battery in here for now. And in the future, we'll talk about all kinds of stuff relating to vehicles as we go and as we find materials. We'll talk about um, binding, you know, sorting zones to cargo spaces, all that good stuff that comes with vehicles. So for now, that's going to do it. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the episode. I'll be back with more Cataclysm tutorial content in the near future. Take off the headgear before I forget. Uh, and I'll see you in the next episode.